Welcome to the 14th episode of the fifth season of the Ubuntu UK podcast. It's Tuesday the 28th of August and in this episode we're going to talk about OgCamp and review the book Ubuntu Made Easy. We will of course cover the latest news, events, bit about Ubuntu, tomorrow's technology today and go over your feedback. If you're listening live you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. I'm Tony and joining me tonight are Laura, Mark and Alan. Hello everybody. Hello. 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 Right. So, uh, Laura, what have you been doing? I went to Og Camp. What's you that went then? To Og Camp. <laughs> it's a little event. A little event. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Alan, what <laughs> did you do in the last couple of weeks? Wow. Uh, <laughs> harsh. Uh, I was on a um, fundraising. Well, not on it. I was uh, tuned into a fundraising event for the Accessible Computing Framework. Uh, right over the weekend. Do you remember talking that to Jonathan Nagel? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, two or about, three episodes ago. Yeah, he had a, f- a fundraising drive. Yes, to um, yes, well, the kind of forty-eight funds. hour thing. Yes, and uh, it was interesting. There was loads of people. They did it via Mumble, and uh, it worked really well. Cool. Everyone just dives in and has a bit of a chat and asks questions. And myself and Dan Lynch from Linux Outlaws was there. Who? And, uh, yes, cool. and uh, Alan Bell uh, joined in as well, and yeah. a few other. Uh, Ken Fallon was there. One of our stunt Alans. So Alan Bell. Was, yes, it was nice to have a chat to them about accessibility in open source software in general and more specifically about ubuntu cool. excellent good fun mark hello hello um i've been using wooby to install ubuntu oh really what yeah really <laughs> um yeah um my girlfriend wanted a new laptop and um it came with windows on it and i was going to blow it all away and start again but mm. but here's the rub um we subscribe to love film and we don't have anything that you can watch Love Film streaming on because it uses Silverlight. So I thought, why not keep Windows around as it's already there, not doing anyone any harm. I'll just install Ubuntu alongside it. Um, and because, as is often the way with laptops, it had it's, it already had four partitions on the hard disk. And I couldn't quite work out which ones I could safely get rid of and which ones I couldn't. So I figured I'd just install alongside using Wooby. Ah, aren't they getting rid of Wooby? I? Yes. I seem to remember. I think we had a news item on it. Mm, that it was... some point. It was being turned over to community support, which eventually, essentially means it's not going to... Well, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it works. Yeah, I mean, I made the mistake of burning a CD and trying to use that, and that didn't do anything. But then I just downloaded the installer from the website and ran it, and it downloaded what it needed, and it worked. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. I was very Slow? impressed. Does it work all right? Yeah, it seems fine. Cool. Mm. Oh, well, is she go. actually going to use it then on her machine, or is yeah. it for you to use on her machine? No, it's for her to use on her machine because we don't have anyone who will support Windows in the house. <laughs> <laughs> is that why she has to sign up to as terms and conditions? <laughs> uh, you can use whatever you want as long as someone will look after it for you. <laughs> as long as that person might be you. Yes. Cool. So, Tony, what have you been up to? I went to uh, Og Camp. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Sounds like a fun pack show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we talk about Ogg Camp? <laughs> Let's. So, as we may have mentioned, we went to Ogg Camp. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, What's Ogg so- Camp then? Ah. Well, Mark, you organised it. Would you like to tell oh, yes. us? Yeah, you single-handedly Me, organised it. all by it. myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a free culture unconference slash bar camp slash a little bit not a bar camp, uh, which was in Liverpool. <laughs> slash bar. Last weekend. Was it last weekend? It was the weekend before. Weekend yeah. before, yeah. Um, was yeah. it? It well, was. It I know. Just gone. It was... Gosh. Time flies. Yeah, you're right. When Time you're flies when you're not organising a camp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there, there might be people at home who are expecting the live show from Og Camp um, because we did say that's what this would be and we yes. wouldn't be doing this now, but we are doing this now. Yeah. Um, there were some technical difficulties with the uh, the live show that we did, which was a, a quiz um, mm-hmm. with the Linux Outlaws guys. Um, so unfortunately, we can't bring that to you, mainly because the microphone that Alan and I were using <laughs> wasn't being recorded. <laughs> and of the UPC team, they were probably the most chatty. <laughs> and the ones who got and the could, answers right. Yeah. We, could, we couldn't possibly have Tony not there. No, <laughs> no the exactly. Could we? So, uh, <laughs> but if you do want to see the quiz, it's on YouTube. Yes, there's you a video of it, it, and it probably yeah. works quite a lot better as a video if than it, it, it does as just. Um, just an audio thing. Yes. Oh so God, um, if you go to 
if you go to youtube.com slash ogcamp tv yes that's right yep then you can see it there. it's called it's the og camp quiz and there's a few other videos on there as well and i think more are going on um, yes sort of over the next few weeks as they get processed and uploaded yes. and edited and stuff which is awesome mm. but the important thing to note is that we won yes we did win by we, quite some we oh, yeah. absolutely thrashed the linux outlaws we are the champions oh uh, yes, yes. We win. <laughs> <laughs> have you got that fanfare tony uh yes i have <laughs> oh. somewhere oh no i haven't <laughs> good oh, i've got the drum roll but i haven't got the fanfare oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so um for those people who did go uh they can leave feedback at uh joined.in slash event slash ogcamp12 and you can also see everyone else's feedback there you can leave a, um, a feedback on specific talks and things as well yes as well as on the event as a whole yeah. so you can right. tell speakers what you thought of their talk and you can tell us what you thought of the organization of what went on and yeah, yeah. and what we can do better next time yeah absolutely yeah. always things to which learn which implies <laughs> basically that there's probably going to be a next Yay! time <laughs> <laughs> excellent cool right so what happened who went up and how we all did when? i, we all I did. drove with um andy smith from bitfolk yes which was good not being on my own in the car and uh he talked to me for four hours all the way up there Aww. which kept me awake that was, which nice. was good four yeah. hours or thereabouts <laughs> wish i was that lucky it took me about seven you didn't look at the google traffic well, I looked it in and thought, ah, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you looked at it before you left, but not again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, okay. but when we eventually all got to Liverpool, yes, um, we saw the lovely hotel. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. The Adelphi. Adelphi. The Adelphi yes. Hotel. The words faded glamour were... <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty were, much sums it up. ...were used quite a lot during the I weekend. Don't know. I don't yeah, so, There was it. something quite quaint about it. I mean, it was clearly an old... A bit tired uh, hotel. Yes. Oh, I liked it. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. It's quite warm. I would have liked Apart it. Apart from being quite warm. I had the furthest room away from reception that you could possibly get. Yeah. Cool. Yes, I know I need the exercise. You don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to rub it in by ba- making it room 679 or <laughs> as far away as you could possibly be. In fact, I could see my car, which was in a car park miles away from the hotel, from my room. Yeah, me, that's how far it was. The special Ma- car park that was essentially just a demolished building. <laughs> 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 with CCTV cameras. Yes. Me and Mark made the mistake of getting impatient with the people queuing at the lifts one evening and walked up what was it, five staircases. Oh, God, that was lots of stairs. We nearly died yeah. at the fourth floor. <laughs> Yeah, the lifts were the slowest lifts in the world, with a kind of vaguely angry-sounding woman doing the uh, the voiceover. Yeah. In the wrong order. In the wrong order. order. Yeah. That was annoying. I guess the... In a, in a, in a, she, was, <laughs> she clearly had a Scouse accent, but was trying to hide it as well, yes. which was quite weird. Yes. Mm. Those stairs probably felt or were um, further... Because all the ceilings were absolutely giant. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so so we're doing each like... floor was much bigger than your normal floors. Yeah. I'll tell you what about the stairs. Coming yeah. down them on the Saturday morning was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'd sobered up by that point. <laughs> <laughs> but more on that story later. Yes. So that's five yeah. minutes on the hotel. Yeah. What about the event itself? <laughs> so the venue. Tell us about the venue, Tony. It was big and white and lots of glass. Mm. Um, it was it was very, very big, um, which meant we had lots of space to do stuff. It but was... also quite a lot of space for people to wander around looking yes. a bit confused. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was yeah. the Art and Design Academy for Liverpool John Moores University. Yeah. yeah. Spe- so fairly spectacular. It's only two years old or something. So yeah. had all the modern projectors and PA and stuff and all of that stuff just worked really yeah, well. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, they did loads to help out. Like, they were um, brilliant. In terms of you know, getting us into the venue, getting equipment set up, getting mm. bits of kit we needed. And yeah, and they did all that as the event sponsors as well. So massive thanks to them. Yeah, indeed, indeed. There was also an outdoor area where we had a geek nick, some, yeah. some grass, and we made the most of that. It was uh, The weather was good. Yep. And everyone sat outside and uh, had some food out on the grass before, in between you know, talks mm. in the morning and afternoon. Uh, plenty of areas to break out for people to have conversations in corridors and... There was a lot of that going on. There was a cafe as well, which I think was a really good idea. Yes. Mm. Um, and we had vouchers to give away so people could get free tea and coffee and things. Yep. That was you... thanks to Scraper Wiki. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Did you know that they were the Leaf on Bold Street that we went to on the Sunday night? Yes. The they cafe. have a, an actual fixed abode, which yes. is very good as Which well. is lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, there were talks as well, apparently. Yeah. That was sort <laughs> of the point, really. Uh, yeah. So we had a... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we had a, an excellent um, scheduled track. 
of course, which I like, organized. That was so the, it's gonna the, be the bit you did, wasn't it? That was that was the bit I did. Yeah. Truly excellent. Um, yeah, which was good. We had uh, yeah some pretty good speakers there, some popular talks, and some less popular talks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think they were all they were all well enjoyed by the feedback yeah. that people have given. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, the feedback that we've got is amazingly positive. Yeah, it's like yeah. I mean, there's one or two. I mean, there's some things which we know we did wrong, like the registration desk wasn't in the right place. So there was a queue, but then there was going to be a queue, even if they were just queuing outside instead of inside. Mm. And it gives us a bit of an ego trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think the the exhibition was a bit hard to find on the first day, but we sorted that out and moved it to yeah. somewhere a bit better. But there were loads of, um, mm. loads of other tracks for people to offer talks because it was after all a bar camp. And of course people did, which is yeah. always good when you organize a bar camp, people come along and do talks. Almost every slot was filled up. I think. Yeah, pretty much. We had a few little niggly problems with the, uh, campfire manager. Um, we did l- losing the odd talk here and there and oh dear. not, not being, might have been my fault. <laughs> not being completely clear. But I mean, it's one of those things that we, it gets developed for a year yeah, and we don't use it for a year. And then the next time we use yeah. it, it's changed a little bit and we have to, you know, relearn it and re-explain it to everyone and um it's yeah. kind of like knocking yeah. a post-it now i think it was yeah. probably quite a lot better used this year because mm. it was probably a lot easier to use especially for mobile phones and stuff because uh. um so we should probably mention um john spriggs jack yeah. weird and heed and a few other um parties whose names i don't know off the top of my head <laughs> but they are the guys who wrote campfire manager and they did a really nice job of making a lovely mobile interface for it which was just dead easy to use so cool. the basic the basic premise is you 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 want to give a talk you go to the website and you you um you suggest a talk that you want to give yeah and then it shows up in a kind of limbo state for everyone else yeah. and then people can vote for it and the by just clicking on it and saying i want to attend this it bubbles up the list exactly. of talks and then it gets scheduled into a room and then you 15 minutes before that the time that that's scheduled to go it's locked in that room isn't yeah it? and then people know exactly which room they need to go to so they're not running around like exactly you know, headless chickens finding talks yeah and that worked pretty well it did yeah. there was a bit there was a bit of a hiccup at the start where um it wasn't actually doing the the scheduling based on votes bit but i managed to sort of gloss over that by doing it manually when no one was looking and i think that worked quite well people still knew where the talks were they still yeah. gave the talks yeah. and we had a couple of tv screens big screens yeah up. yeah and that that works really well i mean when when i go to uds the develop Ubuntu developer summit we have a a tool called summit that we use and it does much the same kind of thing without the um voting yeah. um but it, do, it does do voting in the background similar kind of thing but it's it's nice to have those screens because people congregate yeah, around exactly. the screens and, and then say oh what see are you what's going, going on work out yeah. oh, what that they later. want to see and where it is yeah it's yeah. very it's very social um thing to have them on the big screens rather than everyone just looking at exactly. the event yeah. on their phone yeah. and then wandering off individually yeah i was cunningly placed the photography area next to one of the big screens in the reception for my photography oh, we should probably mention your photography project well, yeah. were you taking photos should... of weddings not at the event no there was nobody there actually getting married maybe you know in a future year who knows um but the uh i wasn't offering i was just saying <laughs> <laughs> if somebody wants Sit to black uh, over here yeah. you're gonna have to buy a new hat <laughs> <laughs> i have several um yeah, uh, so I was doing a, a, a thing with uh, b- volunteers, uh, Tony Hughes and Ilka, uh, Aid Bradshaw's girlfriend, um, helped out as well, taking lots of photos. That Ilka and an attendee in her own right, of course. Well, yes, but... <laughs> she um, found it more interesting she found than the it, photographer. Yeah. She's not a geek, so she doesn't, ah, she doesn't particularly have uh, an interest in all the geeky stuff, so she was really pleased to have something she could get into, which was the photography. Oh, cool, and man. she took more than I did in the end. Um, that worked had, out really well, you yes. taking those photos. It did. Uh, the first day, like people were a bit, okay, yeah, well, a few people came up and did it. And then I showed the slideshow on the last day, and then people really seemed to get the idea. So I wish I'd shown the slideshow of the ones I'd done on Saturday at the end of Saturday. Yeah. And then right. more people will probably have engaged on the Sunday. But we still had, uh, I think, over 130 images and some of those were multiple people in, in different images. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it worked out really well and they're going to be up online as a sort of memento of the uh, of it, the it was really good at the, at the very end. Uh, sorry, not to skip over everything to the very end. <laughs> right. But with those photos... When it all stopped. ...going <laughs> with, you know, some motivational music going in the background... Mm. <laughs> um, I was. It was nice like, yeah, just, yeah, exactly. It was really the other nice. was sitting with everyone and watching yeah. them. It was everyone really got nice. that, that community feel when there's photos of each other, and some of them were quite comedic, and some of them were just sweet. sweet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was kind of like the people going, "Oh," people going, uh, <laughs> "Yeah, Ack is wrong," that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. 
That was good. So, were there any? Um, did you get to uh, other than the photos? Did you get to go to any of the talks no, at all? No, not really. But I did enjoy not having an earpiece on, and and you know that kind of constant background. <laughs> I chatter didn't of things enjoy not on. having an earpiece on, but we didn't have enough radio. Oh, <laughs> oh. you were too far down the pecking order. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, some but of the yes. talks I went to. Go on then. Um, I went to Nathan Dumont's talk about his Og box. Oh, oh yeah, which cool. Which is a little hardware device. Yeah, that device. seemed to be a really popular one. Yeah, people it was. seemed to like that. And it was open hardware project that he's devised this music player device yeah. that he want him and uh, Katie want to have in their house so they can play music, you know, through speakers and stuff. And designed it from scratch and uh, has written the software. And it's it's pretty complicated what he's done and really low level some of the coding that he's done. It's not just you know load a file and kick off M player uh, M player or something like that. It's pretty uh. it's pretty intensive stuff. Um, that was really good. Cool. Um, there was a load of lightning talks. Oh, yeah. They were really popular. That yeah. was really good. Yeah. That Expert, was good fun. Expertly things. hosted, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Mark. Well, I, it actually <laughs> was. Mark was the most severe, like, timekeeper <laughs> well, and yeah. of lightning talks I've ever seen. The thing I've always brilliant. thought about lightning talks is what makes them really good is seeing Stopping. what people spit out in a really short space of time to yeah. try and get their message across. So I was quite strict about five minutes and one, and question. one question because oh, I didn't want them standing there and starting a debate. If you if you dared to try and ask a second <laughs> question. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, there was some confusion over the course of the day as to how long the uh, lightning talks would be. It was <laughs> yeah. like some people were saying it was 15, some was 10, and then it was like, no, it's five. At least <laughs> to crowbar them all in. And so a couple of people had written talks that they were going to run as one hour talks, I think Dominic and John Fulton well, yeah. both wrote talks that were going to be an hour long and they managed to shrink them both down to five <laughs> minutes, yeah. which was unfortunate because they were both interesting subjects. That, but amusing. Uh, yeah. yeah. But we did, yeah, we, got, we got a lot of feedback that people want more lightning talks next mm. year and I yeah. don't think we'd done them before. No. So I think definitely more next year. Yeah, Excellent. they were really good. Yeah, there cool. was a lot of mixture as well because there were prepared talks with slides, there were prepared yeah. talks without slides, there were off-your-cuff talks like acted and... Um, Dorbers did a kind of semi rant, right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which was brilliant. Was I enjoyed the uh, scraper wiki. Mm. Yeah, that was really interesting. That was good fun with a with a. De- they had a, a working demo, and um, yeah, one person giving the demo while another person talks about the you know the projects and, and what yeah. they do, and um, yeah. So I, 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 the one thing that I get out of Old Camp is I learn about a whole load of stuff while I'm there. Yeah, um, yeah. which is which is really the whole, the whole point is. I went to the Enigma talk, which was good. Mm. And somebody oh, in the review, somebody said this is a perfect example of what a bar camp talk should be because it wasn't too technical, but it was talking about something, the technology. Yeah. And it gave the context of it and it was just really nicely put together. I can't wait to see that one, one on video. And I know there's a whole thing about the, the amount of work is involved in videoing <laughs> four tracks. And Matt Daubney will be you know, sweating over those <laughs> for, for days to come. But I'm really looking forward to seeing the things I missed. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing a talk yes. if I didn't get to see any of them. I think the only thing I saw was, apart from the things that I was in, yeah. uh, was the Stephen Fry video. Yes. I'd already seen that. Which, yeah. Wait, what? Which was Stephen good. Fry video? Stephen Fry video. That's also up on YouTube and that appears is. to be quite popular. 5,000 hits so yeah. far. In about nice. two days. Which when about, good. you know, 350 people came to our camp. Yeah. But they got other stuff as well. <laughs> Yes, so Stephen That's Fry true. had sent us a, a video message answering some questions that the community had asked and just sort of generally being Stephen Fry especially into a camera. Especially for our camp. But yeah. especially for our that camp. That was the it was amazing lovely. thing. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and we played it just before we did the, the quiz thing and it yeah. went down really, really well. In fact, I think it was the best popula- uh, best uh, attended thing. Yes, really. <laughs> yes. A video. They didn't, they didn't come <laughs> Somebody who wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which, yeah. And of course we had the annual raffle cast. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, I love that. that That's was, always such good fun. Yeah. That was good. Where we gave away, the, or tried to give away, the Nexus 7, I know, donated by Transitive Technologies. It bounced Transitive, back. you say. Yeah. Transitive Technologies. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, they, well, we had to auction it in the end, because the guy who won it didn't want it. Yeah. And said, I want to auction it for Old Camp. So now we've got a bit more in the Old Camp kitty for next year, thanks yeah, to yes. uh, some uh, furious bidding yes. between uh, several... That was fun. That was bonkers. And at the point at the point when the guy said, No, just auction it off, it was a very ad hoc auction that we yeah, had we to have. Of, there. Can can we yeah. can we do that? How right are we now? gonna take how money? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then <laughs> we started doing it and then you could see <laughs> instantly. Yeah, someone everyone. someone offered a tenner <laughs> Lorna, and no, then we were like, Oh, we're doing it then. Lorna Jane just shouted out, I'll give you a fiver for it. <laughs> and somebody's like, 
that's not very much. Yeah, goes, Dan, that's the point. Yeah, Dan was like, <laughs> he, Dan was sitting down next to you. He's like, you can't pay a fiver for it. And then someone else said, tenner. And, they um, and, and he was it. like, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> auction. This is the concept of an auction. Yeah. Yes. Everyone getting their smartphones out to find out exactly what the retail value of them was. <laughs> and then going way over it anyway. Yeah. I think yeah. it went bonkers and went straight past it, which yeah. is bizarre. But there are a couple mm. of other things where well, we had the open hardware jam oh, of course. going we on. Can't miss oh, the open which is brilliant, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. It was actually, yeah, rather than just talking about things, people doing things. Yeah. And, yeah. Making you know, computers and making t shirts and making, yeah. making yeah. bags and yeah, bags out of old t shirts. So last year I came home with a giant box. Full of all of last Thank year's you for leftover left old camp T-shirts, and uh, I was so happy to drive them back to Liverpool <laughs> <laughs> and give them to someone who made uh, bags and yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. So it was, awesome. it was packed when I was up there. Yeah. People were, yeah, there was something to do with kites and all oh, sorts yeah, of weird. Oh yeah, kites that play music and yes. people making like LED. There was a laptop with like a homemade LED thing on the lid, which yeah, was like displaying yeah. a pattern, and yeah, making eight-bit computers and. Raspberry Pis. Yeah. That eight bit computer was fantastic. The Fignition. It had no yeah, the Fignition. It had no external keyboard. It had yeah. um eight cord keyboards. Like keyboard. Cord keyboard. keyboard. And the guy was tapping out commands yeah. in fourth on, the, on this little thing. I was going, Look, I'll just show you how it works. Like smacking these Most buttons. Most people like have mad. trouble with an ordinary keyboard. Yeah, exactly. And oh, it was brilliant. It was good mm. fun. Yeah. And we also had the exhibition. Yes. yes. Because, uh, Josette. Josette was there for my the ever lovely Josette. Uh, but a whole heap of other things yeah, there, we FSFE and FSFE yeah. and uh, Open Rights Group um, and the Bite o- Mark. Oh, Bite Mark, of course, oh, our yes. sponsors, Bite Mark Hosting. In fact, Bite Mark sent us this message. Hey, it's Tim Dobson from Bite Mark. I just wanted to thank everybody for making this the most friendly conference uh, in the UK, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thanks again for everyone who came and to all the organisers. Oh, that was lovely. Aww. In fact, he's not the only person who said specifically that it was the most friendly conference they've been to. Indeed. That's really, That's really cool. nice. And one of the other exhibition stands uh, was Ken Fallon Ken from Fallon. Hacker Public Radio, <laughs> who happened to send us this message. This is Ken Fallon. Just like to say, had a fantastic time at our camp. He all did a brilliant job. Um, however, the mug bug was overlooked for the second year in a row. Black mugs. How can I possibly know how, uh, how dark my tea is? But all that aside, um, everybody did a fantastic job. Big shout out to the crew. Brilliant venues. Hotel was great. Other venue was great. And uh, counting down to next year. Thanks, everybody, for all the interviews. And look forward to next year. Bye. That's a good point, actually. If the worst thing we've done is the wrong colour mug mug. (laughs) for one person. Which we sold loads of. Yeah. Indeed. And if it's uh, yeah, if you want to hear some some of the people who were at Old Camp, if you go to hackerpublicradio.org, is it? HPR.org. HPR.org. Yeah. Um, Ken was basically running around with a little recorder, just grabbing people and interviewing them. And there's some really interesting conversations there. Mm. And oh, it's not H. It's not HPR.org. If you Google That's... Hacker Public Radio, yes. I'm sure it's the first yeah. hit. And uh, yeah, there's there's an interesting crossover where Fab was going around with the camera, talking to people, and he ran into Ken. And then they started interviewing each other. So if you listen to the audio, you've got one side of the conversation. If you watch the video, you've got the other. It's quite surreal. <laughs> so, yes, a big thank you to Laura Tchaikovsky, who organised yes. the exhibition area, put a lot of work getting that in. Yes, and sorting out the hotel for us as well. All oh, right, okay. All oh, right. Yes, she's good at uh, haranguing people into giving us good deals. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, and... Uh, the crew. The crew. And the crew, of course. Who could forget the crew? Who and, sold uh, all the T-shirts and almost all the mugs. Yes, Emma wow. and Charlie and the other lady whose name temporarily escapes me um, did a fantastic <laughs> job of flogging all of the old T-shirts and all the new T-shirts and, the and all mugs. the mugs. It's funny, mugs. At one point, we got the uh, the old vintage mugs from last year out of the box. Yeah. And they went, oh, what are these? Oh, they're last year's. Well, this year's ones are five pounds. Let's make these a pound. Last year's ones a pound. Someone ran up and went, I'll give you a pound for that it. That was took me. one away. And she that went, was right, me. that's two, cheap. <laughs> two pounds. <laughs> it's like dynamic pricing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Demand-led pricing. Yeah. 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 Yes. But yeah, we made uh, yeah even more for the old camp kitty for next year. Absolutely, yeah, yeah good stuff. So, but uh, the rest of the crew did a fantastic job as well, carrying boxes and you know lifting and shifting, making and it happen, making it all happen. So it really is a team effort. And although I didn't have anything to do with the organisation of it, I had a great weekend and lots of drinking and things at the parties and the bars. Um, yes. I stayed up till stupid o'clock in the morning talking to yeah. lots of people who you do, I don't see for most of the rest of the year and only catch up at old camp. So yeah, that alone is a good reason for me to. Uh, get involved yes. again in the future years and 
Yeah. See you all next time. See you all next time, yes. And now it's time for the news. Samsung has lost a US patent case to Apple over copying of iPhone features in Galaxy S and Galaxy S2 phones. Samsung has been ordered to pay $1 billion in damages. And is going to appeal. Cool. Didn't they also win something? I think they won a, another case where, uh, in another country, it was decided they didn't copy Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was South Korea, the home of Samsung. <laughs> interesting. And in the home of Apple, they lose. Hmm, mm. Interesting. For one yes. billion, whatever the South Korean currency yes. is. Mm. Although, uh, apparently, it doesn't really impact on the amount of profit they made. It's something They made something like 26 billion off of their no, phones. No, but it's, it's a symbolic thing. And the fact that it's reinforcing the whole idea that you can patent the look and feel of, yeah. of a device is kind of blur. Nobody else can do it for 20 years. The first human to set foot on another world, Neil Armstrong, has sadly died. Ah, oh. one small step for man, one giant leap for la- mankind. Two presenters talking in the corner of the studio. I don't know what they're talking about. Don't worry. Okay. Yes, it was very sad. Yes, died yes. after complications following heart surgery. Yes. yes. So Buzz Aldrin is, I guess, the next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next, the next <laughs> I mean, one to go. He's the next person onto the moon, and he's still alive. So he's kind of the okay. uh, the, the, the next most senior dream. one living. I don't okay. know. Okay, he did quite a nice statement. Yes, it was on his website. Mm. Yes, very sad. Twitter have shelled out fifteen thousand US dollars. That doesn't quite work. The same as a billion, it? does it? <laughs> uh, to become a silver sponsor of the Linux Foundation, just days after annoying lots of developers by reducing usage caps for their API. I, uh, after reading this, I went and had a look at the uh, Linux Foundation um, sponsors page. It's a giant list, who's who, of you know every company you've heard of that uses Linux in some way or another. Which, you know, it's not surprising Twitter get on there. Cause no. It's quite it. cheap. It's a lot cheaper to sponsor OgCamp, I'd like to point <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anybody's listening. Yeah. Uh. VMware, Intel, and NEC, NEC allegedly may be about to join OpenStack Foundation. Basically, but... there's a, there's a, <laughs> a, a um, an OpenStack board meeting going on at the moment. This is what we were discussing. Breaking the news, and uh, yeah, basically one of the things up for discussion is whether to accept VMware, Intel, and NEC's uh, respective um, applications to become gold sponsors of the foundation. Is this good uh... or bad? I think it's good. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I bet it's a lot cheaper to sponsor OGCAMP okay. than it is to <laughs> become the yes. And the Raspberry Pi Foundation have announced they've added pay for support for additional codecs, which will allow the device to play MPEG 2 and VC1 video, as well as the included H.264 codec. Interesting. So MPEG 2 DVB uh, yeah. preview type streaming. Ah, yeah. that's, that's why it's that's interesting. Why. They, the reason they did it is because they they. They heard that a lot of people were using them as media devices. Yes. And mm. um, because things like Freeview and other DVB providers right. comes down as MPEG-2. So you could stick a little USB tuner in one of the USB ports, presumably. Well, not even that. If you if you record using a back end like Myth TV. Oh, yes. And you want uh, your Raspberry Pi to be a front end. Yeah. Then... If you do the hardware decoding in the chip on the Raspberry Pi, then you don't need to transcode it along the way yeah. to the Raspberry Pi. You can just stream straight from disk to the Raspberry Pi and onto your screen. Mm-hmm. Is and it powerful dedicate... enough for that? Yes. yes. That, that, That's the, the point adding... of having a dedicated chip, is that yeah. it can do it better than using yeah. a CPU. And oh, previously, okay. the only codec that they licensed from Broadcom, or licensed from whoever gives you their H.264 license, um, was H.264. Uh, which is which is right. fine. It's an okay codec, but because loads of people have libraries and libraries and libraries of stuff they've recorded off telly, mm. which is in MPEG two, they either don't use the Raspberry Pi or they have to re-encode it all as H two six four, which is a bit of a pain. Mm. But the interesting thing is, if you buy the codex, it's tied to one Raspberry Pi, the serial number mm. of okay. one device. Cool. Yay for free software. <laughs> <Yeah>. Excellent. <laughs> And we have some events. Yay. There's SkyCon on the 6th and 7th of October over in Ireland. This is uh, Laura Tchaikovsky's event over there. Is it? She's, yes. She's well, helping she's organise it. One of the... Uh, yes. yes. 
Uh, yes, it's going to be good. I'm going to be going. Oh, you are now. I am def- almost. Are you giving going. a talk? I'm giving a talk. Yeah. Guess which talk? Uh, is it about weddings? Podcasting no. for fun and frolics. <laughs> fun and what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what you get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that talk. And I thought you'd retired that talk. Uh, no, he no. felt sad too. I, well, I just hadn't had the opportunity to give it for a while, so I'm going to dust it off, polish it up, bring it bang up today, and make it fantastic for all the good people at Skycon. Hack Manchester on the 27th and 28th of October is happening in Manchester, surprisingly, hence the name Hack Manchester. It's a 24 hour coding competition where teams of four people code for 24 hours. Museum uh, uh, Taking part of the Museum of Science and Industry as part of the Manchester Science Festival. Hackmanchester.com is where you can wow. find out more. Sounds like fun. Indeed, it does. Is Are we running end? behind That'll... time? <laughs> is no, that why no. you're going so fast? No. That is the end of the events. Hello, and welcome to Tomorrow's Technology Today. I'm Douglas Austin Cambridge. Good day to all our listeners, wherever you are around the British Empire, or indeed Newcastle. Wahe and gan up the tyne, as they say. And it's good day to our charming hostess, Miss Deirdre Morris Oxford. Good day, Dewglass. And it gives me great pleasure to announce that before long, I won't need to meet you in the studio ever again. Why ever not, Deirdre? There is a suite of inventions for remote conferences that will make conference venues a thing of the past. Virtually a thing of the future, Deirdre. Yes, Douglas. For example, a Mr. John Logie Baird of Scotland believes that real time, over the air transmission of moving pictures with synchronised radio sound, will make face to face meetings unnecessary. Conference papers may be sent out and amended using wireless telegraphy, and everyone will be able to attend events without leaving the home. Uh, but that's not the point of a conference, Deirdre. What about all the other things you go to conferences for? Overpriced tea and muffins, bad sandwiches, coffee that looks and tastes like boot polish diluted in dishwater. What about the bar afterwards? You might as well go drinking by yourself. You often go drinking by yourself. Yes, but that's not the point. Surely one goes to conferences for the people. If you mean awkward social silences, bodily odours and crashing boredom, Surely that's an advantage of the remote conference. I beg to differ, Deirdre. One can have the most thrilling encounters in seaside hotels. I I mean exchanges. I I mean uh, stimulating, rigorous and lively exchanges. Uh, Intellectual ones, of course. I think we know what you mean. Conferences are no place for respectable ladies. Uh, Why ever not? Being propositioned by short, bald men with bared moustaches I'm quite tall and have a jolly good moustache. Not to mention being propositioned by tall, drunk, married men. Are you sure you're going to the right conferences, Deirdre? It sounds like you need a sort of unconference. I'd rather not go at all. Why not save one's travel time and money and use the wonders of technology to communicate while staying at home with one's family? I think you might have just hit the proverbial nail on the head, old girl. Well, that's all from tomorrow's technology today. Toodle Pip and God Save the King. We've been sent something to review. And this time, it's not a low-cost, cheap piece of hardware. Oh, It's a book. Is it a a low-cost, cheap book? (laughs) It's a real dead tree book. I have no idea how much it costs. Oh, $35 by the look of it, according to the back. It's about £4. I was contacted (laughs) by uh, No Starch Press. They've um, released a new version of Ubuntu Made Easy, a project-based introduction to Linux. And it's by Rickford Grant and Phil Bull. And it's been updated for 12.04, Ubuntu 12.04. Ah, cool. Which is obviously an LTS release. Yes. Making so, it a useful book. Yes. And actually, there's a CD in the back, uh, which I would presume contains Ubuntu 12.04, but I don't know, actually. Maybe. I think yeah. I haven't opened the CD, so I don't know. Let's hope so. I think one of the chapters yes. oh, in the book takes you through using the CD to try and install. 
cool. Into. Cool. Okay. So, what about this book? So, it's. I uh, I actually read the PDF before they sent me the book. They uh, they were kind enough to send me a PDF version of it, and um, I managed to crack through the entire book in just a couple of hours. Uh, and that's mostly because I you know, know most of the content already. Right. But uh, whilst whilst reviewing it, I you know picked up a few things. But one of the the main things that I like about it is the style with which it's written. It's, it's really easy to read and it's, it's written in a fairly relaxed tone and goes through all the steps right from, you know, the basics of what is Ubuntu. I've never heard of this thing before all the way through to, you know, using it as your daily machine and using it for creative purposes and getting online and all that kind of stuff and adding additional software. And it's broken down into pretty logical chapters, you know, starts off with, um, what is Linux, uh, moves on to, um, actually getting to know the Ubuntu desktop and, um, connecting online, trying out email and surfing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so each chapter is a different kind of collection of activities. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, there's a, an entire section on um, putting, uh, organizing your files and directories, and there's a whole chapter on um, customizing the look and feel of, of the desktop, that kind of thing. So you managed to squeeze out a whole chapter on that with <laughs> Unity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a huge chapter. It's 20 pages. So what's the audience? Is it people who are already familiar with computers and this is introducing them to Ubuntu? I think so, or? yeah. It, it, it would it would appeal, I think, to someone who's you know heard mention of Ubuntu or heard mention of Linux and wants to give it a try, but right. has some trepidation about just you know sticking a CD in off of a magazine cover and mm. you know not having anything to help them or guide them through you know the first few steps because you know it is quite daunting when you first install the CD and or even just put the cd in before you even install it mm. it's quite daunting you know it's it's quite unfamiliar if you're if you're used to um windows which most people will be mm. that you know um i think i think this probably wouldn't appeal to my mum two years ago who didn't have right. had never used a computer i think if you have some background then you know it, it makes more sense but you put her on uh, Ubuntu. I did, with virtually zero training yeah. whatsoever. But she has a very restricted use. You know, she just opens a web browser and off she goes. You know, she doesn't actually um, install a load of apps or anything like that. But this goes through going beyond just using a web browser and just using it to get your email. It's you know, going about um, synchron- synchronizing your, your MP3 player right. and... Um, it- Doing work-related stuff. Yeah, it's probably more aimed at, say, my mum, who would buy that sort of thing because she'd get the basics and then want to know what else she could do. Right. Yeah. It, it, I had a quick look through before we started the uh, the show today, and I was kind of curious as to who, what... Some of the areas they chose are obviously of a, a, a broad appeal, how to mm-hmm. use your iPod with Ubuntu. Mm-hmm. And some of them are a little more esoteric. There is a obligatory chapter on the command line, including <laughs> who am I and the finger command. I've been using Linux for 14 years and have never had to use the finger command no, for no, anything. I. I might have I. used who am I once. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a byproduct of the authors having a lengthy experience in, in Linux. And maybe they... They need to remember that you know that some of these things People are just don't probably care. Need, need to be dead now. <laughs> you know, there's, there's yeah, no I suppose it could anymore. be. Yeah, but it could be an example of these are the sort of things the command line can do. You know, there's there's a file here, and the finger command reads it from here. So that sort of starts to it's, it's can, something can, very very yeah. basic. I would have you stuck can it see at the, the back of the book though. It's yeah. kind of the question I was going to ask actually, because I think you get a lot of these kind of books where people the author starts at the beginning and just goes on to the end and fills in all the gaps in between so it's complete mm. as opposed to going what do these kind of people actually need to know and want yeah. to know and not just shoving a bit about this just because everybody should know it right mm. um, so yes. how how on a scale of one to ten where ten is <laughs> uh, one way or the other anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> ten is one way how good is you it? it how how good is it in terms of 
being targeted at the right people as opposed to just being a complete book about beginnings. It's, it's not comprehensive. It's not it's not massively comprehensive. There's plenty of room for you to learn more stuff. Yeah, mm. that's um, good. And and it does give you some direction as to where you can go next. And it also talks about the community and how you could get involved and that kind of stuff. Oh, that's but good. it's yeah. but it does and but that's right at the very end of the book. Does it talk about achievements? Uh <laughs> yes it does. Oh, wow. cool. It does talk about Jono's um, achieve, achievement. Yeah, Jono's achievements. It doesn't look too weighty. That's kind of no, what I was not. getting at. It's not just yeah. full for the sake of it. It seems to be quite a decent size. 400 odd pages yeah. and there's content. A, there's a, a lot of screenshots and things in there as well, so mm. it's not just solid text. Yeah. Uh, and there's quite a good index as well. There were a couple of quirky things that uh, that I discovered, and I think these might be a byproduct of who who's, who's written these. I think Phil is... Uh, um, does a lot of documentation for the Gnome project. So there's a couple of things in here that kind of stand out a little bit. Like there's there's mentions of a, a Gnome um, sticky notes app in the book. Right. right. Which we don't ship in Ubuntu mm. by default. We've got Tomboy and that's on the CD and that's, oh. yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the note app that's been around for ages. Yeah. And that kind of like jumped off the page. I've never heard of this thing. Okay, maybe that's just me because I don't use a stock Gnome desktop so I'd not really used that app but that just seemed a bit strange for that to be included and there was there was a bit where they talked about um installing applications and they they talked about installing blender um and how that's a you know really good if you're creative and 3d stuff but the way they talked about installing it was to go to blender.org and download it and install mm. it huh. not open the software center type in blender let's type in blender <laughs> and press okay and when they talked about um, installing MP3 support, they went through it manually rather than saying double click an MP3 file and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it That's actually does do. it all for you. <laughs> um, it was like, right, now you need to do this and you need to install this codec and stuff. And that that, that jarred a little bit because that, that detracts from the whole making it easy. Yeah. The whole making it easy is you double click an MP3 and it does it for and it, you. And it's not like... They were writing to the previous version because it's done that for ages. Yeah, mm. I, I, I'm not sure what why why that was there. It, it seemed unnecessary to me. When it explains how to do things that aren't in their body, well, things like installing Flash, installing MP3 support, does it touch on the sort of the non-free aspect of it, or does it just say there isn't MP3 support? This is how to get it. I think it does actually. I don't remember the specifics of that bit, but I, I'm pretty sure there 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 was a bit about. Um, uh, the non-free stuff like video. There's a bit about the video drivers and uh, where you can get them, um, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't go into, into a huge detail. It's not like it's got like the FSF manifesto on, it, <laughs> on every other page or you know Ooh. anything like that. It's uh, sorry, the GNU manifesto. Uh, it's you know it's practical yeah. and it and it, it's accessible as well. It didn't it didn't feel like something that was. Um, you know, lecturing at me. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like I could you know get involved and and actually. Um, you know, try out the various things in here and, and they seem to work. You know, I tried a few of the, the example things and it worked okay. It's quite interesting. You say it's a 400-odd page book and this is Ubuntu Made Easy. Do we need 400 <laughs> pages of book? Sh- should we need 400 pages of book about how to make Ubuntu easy? Isn't it supposed to be easy already? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Have you got a good answer? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well... <sighs> I mean, if you put anyone in front of a completely unfamiliar operating system, put mm. anyone in front of a Mac, yeah. and they've never used a Mac before, they're going to want to know, well, how do I find my files? And which of these icons mm. is the web browser? I mean, Safari, I, you know, if I'd never used a Mac before, I would never know that Safari was the web browser. It doesn't scream web browser at yeah. me. Um, and, you know, how do I access parental controls or something that's buried deep in some settings menu? There's always going to be some level of unfamiliarity. So I'm... I'm okay with the fact that there's bits that have Ubuntu that are not immediately accessible to, you know, people who've never used it before. Progressive mm. disclosure. Really? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Don't show them all at once. Yeah, I think people probably would explode a bit if they saw it all at once. Yeah. yeah. And, and not know what to and not know what they're looking at. We've had discussions in the past about should um Ubuntu have a quick start video when you when you first install? And yeah, you know, something that guides you through the you know, sort of like an introduction to all the different parts of Unity over the course of <laughs> half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, oh. or an interactive guide, or you know, just something you know, simple to show you where everything is. And that—that's you know, 
the with the Ubuntu manual project, their original goal yeah. was to write a manual that would go on the CD mm. that would have a link on the desktop or a link in the menu somewhere so that people could get straight to the manual and see. But then that gives you the wrong impression. Yeah. It's like, what, you yeah, need why do you need a manual? Thing? Yeah. I was just wondering whether... I can't, I can't think who needs that very, very basic stuff because, as you say, if you gave it to your mum who has a very limited set of tasks... Giving her a book with it probably wouldn't be that useful. You need to, like, you set it up and then show her how to use it and she's fine. Giving it to, say, my mum, um, just because there's another example, um, she probably wouldn't read the introdu- very basic introductory stuff. She'd be looking for the bit more power user stuff. So I'm kind of wondering whether those introductory chapters are useful to anybody <laughs> and whether it's just that nobody dares leave them out just in case somebody needs it. And actually, they might be better served by, as you say, an interactive tour or something. That A leaflet. <laughs> a leaflet, a getting started leaflet. Yeah, so yeah. you don't actually need those very basic chapters on how to find your files and stuff. It's just you have that kind of guidance within the UI, but then you buy a book if you want to explore things because you're not sure that you found everything yourself. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. Sorry. Over, overall, I, I, I think, think it's so. a good book. Does I, it make I, Ubuntu I easy? Uh, it seemed to clarify, you know, all the kinds of, well, why is this box popping up? Or what do I need that for? Or how do I do yeah. that? It, those yeah. kind of questions that, that people, you know, when you very first show them something new, that the questions that they're likely to, to ask. And it, and it does, they have moved some of the deeper stuff to the back, to the appendix. So, for example... Um, there's a bit about installing Ubuntu from a USB drive. Now, the fact that the book has got a CD in the back <laughs> means that d- you may right. well be installing off a CD. And so mm-hmm. putting details about how to install off a USB key, given there isn't one in the book, is possibly redundant. So they've shoved that to the back. There's also a bit about um, 64-bit uh, computing, yeah. which for most people doesn't... Nobody really cares. It's just, I want the desktop to work and... You know, okay, it's frustrating that you can't see all your memory, or you know, you're not using the absolute capacity of your machine. So, we... but most people don't even know about it. So that's at the back, and then the final one that's at the back is manually partitioning your hard drive. <laughs> that that perennial subject that nobody, you know. <laughs> what about what about LVM and RAID? Is that there? Uh, I don't think it is actually. What about <laughs> is anything about, home? Uh, yeah, there is there is a <laughs> section um, about security. It's called defending the nest. It's all Ooh. alluding to like the penguins, penguins and yeah. So, um, <laughs> do penguins build nests? Uh, uh, well, skipping over that, uh, <laughs> we we're, we're defending this penguins. hypothetical penguin nest <laughs> by encrypting files and shredding files when we delete them and setting up a firewall. Those kind it's of things. Very Shred the files. It's the metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm moving over to uh, Laura for her questions. Uh, <laughs> Rather than Tony's ridiculous question. I've got a good question. Is it a 32-bit version on the DVD yes, or CD is. then? Right, yes, not the 64-bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Well, we only have a couple of minutes left on this segment now. So I think uh, in fact, we should give this away. Really? Yes, in the competition. Wow. It's really good, isn't it? Yes. It's definitely worth having. Yes, it is. Yes. if you're Laura's And mom. even if it's, you know, not something <laughs> that you she would knows, use, already know. it might be useful for you know someone you know. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to set a question. Alan, can you remember the question? I think I can remember the question. Okay. But I might have to alt-tab and then scroll down to find out okay. what the question was. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so, the question. To win this book, Ubuntu Made Easy, which we will ship to you. Regardless of where you are? <laughs> Regardless or? of where you are, even if you're a penguin on the <laughs> North Pole? South, South Pole. Pole. South Pole. Even if you're a penguin in Antarctica. The question is, what one thing would you do to make Ubuntu easier? Email your answer to competition at ubuntu-uk.org. And if you send it to the normal com- the normal address, we don't let it in. Yeah, it's not all yeah. So email and, to... And com- there are other, other restrictions on your answer. Yeah, I haven't got there yet. <laughs> so email to competition at ubuntu-uk.org. <laughs> the closing date is the 24th of September. Uh, and the one... Two res- episodes time? Yeah. Yes. So it's two episodes. And the one restriction I'm going to put on this is that you have to describe how you would make Ubuntu easier in 140 characters or less. Not how you would make it easier in 140 characters, but describe <laughs> in how In 140 you make, characters, yes, one. how you would make it so easier. So we don't want an essay, we want something you would do. Yes. So that yes. we can read them out if they're any good. Exactly, <laughs> yes. 
And the winner yes. is going to be announced in episode 16, so in two yep. episodes' time. And it will be the one that's most interesting. Yes. yes. Excellent. So don't be dull. <laughs> Get your answers in, and yes. good luck, everybody. And now it's time for the bit about Ubuntu, Tony. And there is a new photo lens for Ubuntu 12.10. I was quite excited about this, then I realised it was something in Unity. <laughs> Not an actual camera <laughs> lens. You no, thought it was a cheap an lens. An actual camera lens. Oh, I see. Yes, photo lens, camera lens. I see what you did there. Yeah. So yeah. what's new and fantastic about this then? Uh, it's a way of searching your photos, both online and locally. So, is not, it not? It, the previous lenses, yes. yes. Uh, the previous lenses we've got is searching your applications, your files, your music, and your videos. So, it made sense to have one for searching your photos. Was there not already a photos one? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In maybe, a word. maybe we will talk about that off air. But yes, I like the fact <laughs> you can filter it with um, metadata. Yes. yes. So I just can... remember a product demo that involved a photo lens. <laughs> no Tony raised his eyebrows knowingly. Um, no idea. What you're talking yeah, about. but this this is uh, <laughs> this has a uh, uh, a filter where you can filter by various metadata. So last seven day, last seven days, last thirty days, that sort of thing, um, which is quite cool. And the source being like locally or remote, and you can filter by that as well. Yeah, excellent. So you can see all of your photos. Cool. Ooh. There's a new feature in Unity uh, called previews. So on, say, your music files, you could right-click it and presumably select preview, and it will preview whatever it is. Actually, you just right-click and it instantly takes you to the preview. Oh, okay. So it'll take you if, if you... I didn't if... quite believe it when I read that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does just work. I tried it today. <laughs> cool. you, you've got like a list of um, your... It doesn't um, work when you point at the screen. You've got... Yeah, I'm trying to explain it. Okay, I won't. On a podcast. I'll sit on my hands and try and explain it. Um, so you've got when you sort of search for music, you've got the album covers yeah. listed. Uh, if you right click, it'll zoom in to that uh, and show you the the full size uh, album cover. And then on the right hand side, it'll show you the track listing. Oh, cool. For example, yeah. and it does that. It does like other sorts of documents. So if you've got a um, um, uh, office document, it'll show you a preview of the actual text from the document yes. and things like that. Yeah. And if it's music, does it actual music file? Will it play the music i don't know i've not tried that bit because there used to be something that did that oh in nautilus when you yeah. hover over a file yeah, yeah, it, it, that yeah. was really cool well, actually yeah. it's cool and, and frightening yeah. yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> very frightening if you've left your mouth somewhere yeah. <laughs> and ubuntu 12.04.1 is out mm, Ooh, the point release catchy yes mm, this is exactly the same as if you had a 12 4 system and have kept it up to date Yes. It's just an updated well, yes ISO. and no, because uh, if you bought a brand new piece of hardware this week, it is possible that the 1204 install kernel might not detect some piece of hardware in this possibly right. newer, oh, so got, newer yeah. driver and newer kernel in, in the the point one release. Cool. cool. Okay. Unity 2D is gone. It is no more. It is an X parrot, etc. to be. So does this mean that when I upgrade, my netbook is not going to be happy? Probably. Uh, well, I'm sure it'll be delighted with the uh, new software you're giving it. Um, the new software rendering I'm giving it. Yeah, uh, well, which, uh, it depends. It's all right, uh, it's never got over KDE. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so in in the future, when 12.10 releases, there'll be no Unity 2D on the CD. Right. So if you install 12.10, it's Unity 3D only. If you have a device that's capable of 3D acceleration, yeah. then you'll get Unity 3D hardware accelerated by your GPU. Right. If you don't, then it will be using software rendering via LLVM pipe. And so your CPU will be doing what the GPU will be doing. Right. And leaving not a lot of runtime for anything else, presumably. Um, it's not that bad, oh, actually. Okay, um, but just don't try and move your mouse when you're playing a song. <laughs> You're no. thinking of your your phone again, yes. aren't you? Yes. No, it's um, it's not that bad. Uh, okay. There's room for improvement, uh, right. but um, yeah, it's getting there. Right. Cool. Good luck. Mm. Ubuntu <laughs> is going to be available preloaded on a never seen before computer in a keyboard factor form huh? factor. Yes. Like an Amiga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Or a Sinclair Spectrum, or a ZX81. Yeah. yeah. Or an Apple II. Yes. yes. Yeah. So this is a company who are making computers where everything is inside the keyboard. 
mm. like a laptop with a screen cut off. So you yeah. basically walk around with a keyboard. <laughs> well, you don't well, have no, to walk you around with have it. it on a desk plugged into a monitor. Uh, it's not portable. It doesn't have a battery. Uh, but it, the thing is, all the computing power is in the keyboard. You just plug a screen in and, and away you go. So you don't have a box underneath or a box on the desk or anything like that. Will that work with the uh, Ubuntu Android thing? Because that would just blow your mind, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I can't uh, keep up with you, Laura. No. It's blown my mind already. <laughs> I have that, no idea what you're talking about. It's the about. Battenberg cake and the apple juice. <laughs> yeah. We think wow. the apple, apple juice might have gone off. <laughs> <laughs> Fermented. <laughs> oh my, she's lost it. Uh, oh. UDS has been announced and sponsorship applications were opened. And now closed. Oh really, there we <laughs> They've go. They've got enough money then. Uh, yes. Too many people. Where's UDS going to be then? Copenhagen. Where's that? Denmark. Denmark. <gasps> you can go see the killing set locations. I've not watched the killing. You should. Should I? Mm. Cool. Don't watch it before oh. you go there, Alan, because you'll be scared. Okay. Because all these murders. I but you could go on a killing the, tour. The not network. on a killing tour, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, thanks for the advice. Uh, I'll, I'll stick to that. <laughs> Sarah <laughs> Lund will get you. <laughs> Yeah, that must have been very strong apple juice. It yes. was. <laughs> and finally, Project Sputnik goes beta. Ooh, I'm excited about this. This is the <laughs> this is the developer's laptop, isn't it? This is it? the Dell uh, XPS 13. Yeah, that, uh, Avec Ubuntu. The kind of um, uh, MacBook Pro alike. Ultrabook. Laptop, Ultra, I what uh, sorry, to call yes. it. Ultrabook device, yes. Excellent. And so can people get it? So people can get hold of it. If you go to Barton, well, you can't actually because you had to, uh, you had to apply and uh, they've selected a bunch of people to review it. And Not um, me. Did you, did you apply? I did. Oh, He's the most that's hurt. unfortunate. Did you mention you're the presenter of one of the you most, didn't get, you the didn't, world's no. most popular Ubuntu podcast? Yeah. You didn't get a lot of there room wasn't a free to text explain box. your reasons. Really, you just got to say, I'm right. a developer, yes, please. So, is this the thing that uh, Mark was using on the keynote? Yes, yes, at UDS last time. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. it's very nice actually. I had a play mm. with one uh, when I was at U- the last UDS, it's a, it's a really nice machine. Is it yeah. kind of like a MacBook Air sort of yes. form factor? Slim. Yes, yeah. Yeah. very slim. But yes. the idea is that, that it's got a special Ubuntu image, which is obviously got everything it needs to work with all the hardware, but it's also sort of got all of the developer sort of tool chain stuff pre-installed. Um, so it's got, yeah, all of your... Git, git and com- Yeah, so it's got your, I suppose, compilers and stuff, um, which mm-hmm. you wouldn't normally have in default store. But then it's also got things like Git, yeah, like you say, Git and Juju. So the stuff which developers actually use to write code as well as the stuff which you'd use to... So it's not a bog, it's not a bog standard 1204 yeah. installation. Do you think it's yeah. any good with um, sort of media sort of things, like that you'd use it for an ordinary laptop, or is it only good for development? It's, it's not aimed at that. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it, but... the, the, the target is, is um, well, it's the kind of DevOps and developers who currently are moving away from Windows towards OS X with, with MacBook Pros and, and MacBook Airs. It, it's squarely targeted at that kind of people. Okay. Cool. Well, if you've got one, maybe you can write in and tell us whether it's any good or not. Yeah, they've actually asked people to be very public about uh, about their reviews and cool. give their feedback to Dell and Canonical about you know every aspect of the laptop. Excellent. Well, that's all in the bit about Ubuntu, but we've got one piece in the not about Ubuntu, and that is that Diaspora has become a community, <laughs> that, has become a community project. I'm on Diaspora, I well, think. Someone added so me on the Diaspora today, and I opened it up to see... Um, a picture of a kitten posted by Alan Pope 11 months ago, which I now <laughs> realise is your older cat when Aww. it was a kitten. Aww. Aww. And that was the last thing that anyone I follow posted on yep. Diaspora. 11 months ago. But yep. it's now a community project, so Great. its governance is now owned that, by the community. That's never led to any projects just dying quietly in the corner, has it? Community-owned projects? Not looking well, at Novell. What was that? Yeah, the folder one. Yeah, iFolder. iFolder. And all of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, good luck if you're interested in federated <laughs> social networking with other people. He's you a very sour person, right? <laughs> I've just logged in. Him, you're not giving him any apple juice? <laughs> no, I gave him cake and I don't know if he's eaten it. I have. Anyway, that's all about the <laughs> bit about and not about a bunch of you this time. <laughs> Yes, it's feedback time. Woo. 
<laughs> Adrian from Wiltshire emailed in to say, Thank you for 100 episodes of great content. I was the winner of that Viglin MPCL, and I've loved it ever since, Aww. even though the first box delivered by Simon was a UHF signal booster. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Popey. What? <laughs> Long story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the short version is right? I met up with Simon and I gave him this box and I said, that's the prize for this, this guy, Adrian, who lives near you oh, in Wiltshire. Yeah. Can you drop it off to him? So he dropped it off and actually I gave him a box that had just a UHF amplifier thing for your telly. Oops. Ah. Uh, yeah. Good. One thing I felt missed from the review of the podcast is the one thing that remained true throughout. It's the fantastic and now iconic theme music, which has never failed to keep fresh with the podcast. It was a stroke of genius by Alan to oh, find what? such a catchy <laughs> tune. What? Thank you again for your repeated excellence in broadcasting. Any glitches or giggles, just maintain the appeal. No, right, let's on. move on right. to the next no, comment. No, 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 it's all right, no, no, Tony. No. It's the Tony and Laura show. You know that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we should have mentioned the theme music, really. Yeah, it is great. I'm glad that I found it, <laughs> not, not Alan. And I, and I approved it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, given it your judicious eye. Uh, yes. Robin Catlin commented on the blog post for our 100th episode. Congratulations, but what is David Dickinson <laughs> doing in the photo with the cake? <laughs> at that no, point, I no. went back and looked at the post and I just sat there and giggled for five minutes. <laughs> you do look rather orange in the photo. Well, probably, I blame I must Tony's say. flash because I am clearly not orange. How, how are the rest of us not orange? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he must have touched the photo up in some way in gimp or bibble or whatever no you really did look like that but i all i did was sit in the sun yeah. that, oh, that would do it it was no fake tan you're supposed to be a geek you know you're supposed to stay indoors which is why like the rest mark, of us. laura and i look so pasty <laughs> <laughs> and i thought i was done compared with your mahogany looks yes. Mahogany. <laughs> yeah chris oh. brown asks is there anything that can be done about the poor audio quality on phone interviews? Yeah, Tony, sort it out. Yeah. On phone interviews. I, I really do struggle to hear them, which is a shame because I love everything else about the podcast. Aww. I'll book a hearing test anyway, just in case. I do <laughs> like that. Yes, uh, particularly in the last episode, the interview was a bit crackly. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. we've got a, a thing, there's a, there's a professional phone interface with the telephone lines, and we do ask people when we're interviewing them to give us a landline, but not everybody has a landline. And I they, might have forgotten to ask last time. Or they, Yeah, or so, so they give us a mobile number or a cell phone number if you're in America, or some funky VoIP bridge or whatever it might be, and so it doesn't sound quite as good. Um, so that's why sometimes it doesn't sound brilliant. Yeah. But we're sorry about that. We'll but try. Totally. We do keep asking people to give us landline numbers, but yeah, maybe we nice. need to get into the 20th century and uh, um, yeah, find some other way of doing it. There yeah. you go. And finally, Jemay Carrillo has written in from Australia. Australian it's... accent. Oh, my <laughs> God. No. Uh, it's been a sort of... Oh, sorry. Let's try that again, shall we? I've been a sort of geek for the past 25 years, with my first computer being a Commodore 64. I've been through every operating system by Microsoft and Apple and had a short time using Red Hat, but now I'm settled Ubuntu. It has made my life complete... In the computer world, I have three laptops and a desktop and all run Ubuntu. My fiancé keeps thinking, thinking that Ubuntu is some sort of African word, person, object or mistress, as I am on it all the time <laughs> and I, I, back to my command line days. I don't think he means it. <laughs> Literally. Al Alan really has gone the colour of a sideboard now. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, we've lost him. Well, oh, thank you, Jamey, for writing in. All your feedback. I'm glad that you had a nice time with Ubuntu. And thank you. <laughs> oh dear, it's the lobby all over again. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening, and that's all for this episode. You can find out how to get in touch with us. <laughs> Alan continues laughing. On our website, squeaks. You can find out how to get in touch with us on our website podcast. <laughs> 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 Dash uk.org, including voice mail numbers and Twitter feeds, Facebook and IRC channels. Let us know what you think of the show and give us your thoughts about Ubuntu and the community around it. Join us on Tuesday, the 11th of September, for our next live broadcast. Well done, Laura. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we'll have got over the giggles by then. Yeah, and I'll put that picture of uh, Alan up again. Yeah, I think it needs to go in this show. Mm, thank um, you. Oh. And thank you also to Katie Dumont. 
for yes. uh, her Don't Panic stickers, which we'll put a photo oh, up as well. Adorning yeah. phones and Kindles and Nexus, Nexus I. Nexus I. Nexus I. Nexus I. Nexus I. <laughs> Everywhere. So thank you so much for Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a breather and some fresh air. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>